everybody it is tanya thrifty treasures welcome to episode 13 of the jewelry detectives and today i have angie of treasured vintage with me and we also have april as our special guest and her youtube channel is bougie bear vintage so welcome ladies hi it's been a long time i missed being on yeah it has been a long time so um yeah, with Brandon recovering, my, my schedule's been crazy, crazy. Um, but I'm so happy, April, uh, that you decided to join us today on such short notice. And I can't wait to see all the goodies you brought to share with us today. So why don't you tell everybody, uh, just real quick, what got you interested in selling jewelry? Um, well, I've already told you earlier, I love jewelry. I've loved jewelry since I was little. Uh-oh, I think I'm having, I can't hear you. You can't hear us? Okay, maybe it's just that I'm seeing myself like lagging. Like I don't see myself real time. Oh yeah, don't look at that video where the chat is. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's distracting me. I'm like, something's wrong here. Yeah, and you know what? Okay. If you want, you can even pop it out so you don't even see it. Like all okay. I see is you yeah. know, I pop out the chat so I just see it and then I see us. Uh, here in this window. <laughs> oh, okay, so there won't be any way for me to see it. What y'all are seeing? Um, you mean like what sure the... you're seeing it right, or if you're yeah. seeing a good view of it? <laughs> just just focus on what's going on under the Google window, and you'll be good. Okay, that went blank when we went live, so I didn't know. Oh, here we go. Now I got you. Okay, I can't see me now. <laughs> okay, That's better. That helps me determine what I'm doing. So to tell you a little bit about me, I've loved jewelry since I was a little girl. I've always, you know, kept pieces. I have my my jewelry, my mother's jewelry, my grandmother's jewelry. So I have like generations of jewelry already in my collection. But um, I started with his grandmother's stuff. I had a few pieces of hers that I didn't really want to wear, but I wanted to find out a little bit more about because a lot of her stuff was, you know, pretty vintage and, and interesting. So. I started there and then I, as I'm watching videos and learning from you and learning from Angie and learning from other people, I was like, jewelry jars? I want to get these jewelry jars. So I started buying the jars and the bags and I pick up individual pieces as well because I go to estate sales and stuff like that. Oh, so yeah. Um, yeah, and that started me out. And so I got on uh, eBay to start with, with a few things that I had. And then I moved to Etsy and uh, now Poshmark have all three. But you won't find my jewelry really on uh, eBay unless like with the stuff I was telling you about earlier that I have that's real cold. I might list that on eBay. Yeah. So I was so excited to hear that you're on Poshmark because I feel like that's a place where you can definitely be moving some jewelry. Right. Yeah. And I got on there because you said it was really easy and it really is easy. Good. Good. And so um, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about your YouTube channel? I know that you recently just started making videos. Ah, yeah, I'm trying. I'm having so many problems with figuring it out because I'm not good with the audio video setup. But okay. yeah, I started making a few, sharing what I'm finding in the jewelry jars and some of the, I guess, other things that I sell, like the hats and the shoes and the clothing I do as well. And yeah. I want to do some more of like the ride along type things where I can show you like the places that I go to everything. But I gotta get over my little shyness. <laughs> And that's what I was going to say. Don't worry about that because like I've heard so many times if you go back to like, say, you know, you have friends that you like to watch on YouTube or whatnot. If you go back mm -hmm. and you look at some of their very first videos, everybody's nervous at first, you know, right, so right. don't beat yourself up about that. So it's just totally normal. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of jewelry did you bring? I can't wait to see what you have. Okay, I'll just start with one thing that's interesting to me. I found this some months back. I don't know if you can see, but it has different kinds of uh, stone. Like it has coral. It has these little art glass beads. That looks like I saw some and, enamel too. Yeah, there's enameling on some of the, the silver beads. It's marked 925 on the toggle clasp, but there's some uh, enameling and I'm not sure. Can y'all see that? Uh-huh. The beads. 
Very cute. And I think that's turquoise, but yeah, I wanted to see if, like, I'm not sure about that stone. I'm not sure what that stone's called. I don't know if that's a type of turquoise or if that's something else. And then I think maybe these are rose, rose quartz or something beads. And I don't know what this bead is, but it's a hefty, really, really, really long necklace. And it has to be, you know. Yeah, it's it's metal wire. So I would have said it's kind of an expensive little necklace. Yeah, it looks like it would go with a lot of different outfits, too. Mm-hmm. I got to clean it up. It's tarnished, but. Now, those, um, those little chips that you called coral, do they, do they have an iridescence to them? I think they might be dyed shell, but I'm not sure. I mean, not oh, okay. dyed shell. Dyed shell. So, do they look um, kind of like pearlescent looking? Mm-mm. No? Mm -mm. Well, that's good. That's a good sign because I, I thought they might be, you know, not coral from, from what I can see, but I can't see them really good. What's God's shell? Yeah. That does look like coral now. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it looks kind of like that. Angel skin. Yeah. yeah, it's milky pink and white yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really pretty. I love the colors. Yeah, yeah I think this one was an estate sale piece that I'd picked up. And that's, that's the top nice. glass on it. Very nice. Yeah, I have cute. never come across anything like that, so I wouldn't. Never know. have I either. This is unique. Uh, I haven't seen anything similar to it at all. I would have no I idea know what it. to put that up for. Yeah, I don't either. But I thought about just keeping it for myself because it's so neat. I told my fiance, I said I should have just uh, wore yeah. this for Easter because it's so colorful. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that would be nice. But and I you forgot. Could it. it was in the bottom of this drawer. Okay. I have this yeah. little watch case that, okay, I picked it up at Goodwill. Of course. Six little places, and you plug it in, and it, it looks like something from a jewelry store where the watches would be on it, and they rotate and turn with the light. Oh, so, that, so I had it, and it has bottom a bottom drawer in it, and I had these in that drawer and forgot that they were in there. It's yeah. like a professional dis jeweler display case. Oh, mm -hmm. that's cool. Wait, I Wait missed it. I must have been looking at the chat. Did you show a jewelry case? I didn't show it, but I can. It's sitting Paper, right. We need to put that on a video on oh, one of your yeah. videos and have it. Oh, we'll like, use it to right. like put bracelets and things on and then take a video of a movie. Yes. And yeah, I want to see that's that. That's what I want to do. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll show you the case. Yeah, I want to see it too. So where'd she get the cases? Did she say? Goodwill. Yeah, Goodwill. Oh, wow. Goodwill. You just never know what you're going to find at Goodwill. I'm telling you. That's neat. Hey, Debbie Max. Oh, wow. That oh, is nice. The, wow. It's lacquered and it's really pretty. I tried to get it for him to put his watches on because he likes watches. I said, put it beside the bed. Put your watches on it. And this, you can slow down the spinning and all that. This is so neat. Cool. come out. And you could put the watches or bracelets on it. I'd be mesmerized. I'd put a <laughs> right on there, and I'd be. Just <laughs> That's what I'm saying it'll be it'll be nice to put pretty shiny, sparkly stuff in there. Oh man! Let it, let it rotate, but it has this drawer here. This is where I have a few of little odd things that I found. Like I shared that in the group one time. I think oh, it's a yeah. hairpin. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. So like the rare, weird things that I find I put in here. <laughs> There's some of those glasses. Cool. Oh, that's antique, neat. antique glasses. I found a they're probably gold. gold. That's probably gold on those glasses. I think they're what gold think? filled. I think I saw gold filled. Gold this is filled. a fire department badge I found <laughs> in a jewelry jar. Yeah. Oh gosh. <laughs> it's a nice metal one too. I don't know if I could sell it. I thought about it. I think you can. I wouldn't know why not. But yeah, that's, that's something now I'm going to want one of those. <laughs> I'm I sure it's pretty valuable, I bet. I want one for Kim's jewelry when I get it. I'll just sit there and watch it. I paid like less than $10 for that. Really? Wow. Mm -hmm. And it works. I think one of the motors is kind of slow on one of the rotating things, but we're going to see if we can get that fixed. Yeah, definitely. That was kind of like... Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
You want to start with something else? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, I found this one recently. I think that's one of those perfume necklaces. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that's it has the little, let me see if I can take it out without breaking it. It's got the little, it's not a snuff because it doesn't have the little scoop spoon thing. So I'm guessing it's perfume. Mm -hmm. Now this kind of looks like that Tibetan silver or maybe indian kind of made i'm not sure i haven't done class, any research clasp look like the chain it actually doesn't have one it's just chained from one side to the other kind of like oh, those wow. 70s necklaces are usually okay. where it's just a solid chain attached to the bottle but it has those little metal dangly things yeah it's really <laughs> unique i've never seen anything like it yeah, that was a pick up diff something different for me. I pick up stuff like that and collect stuff because it's just neat. I'll hang it up on the wall and stuff. I like. Oh it. yeah, it's really neat. So that's not something you you will sell. That's something you will keep. Yeah, at least for now, until I really know exactly where it's from and how much it's worth. Because I'd hate to under sell yeah. it when I like it and think it's neat. I do the same thing. Yeah, I would too. Um, oh, here's something different that I wanted to ask about. From what I could find, that it might be from the 20s. It's oh, the that era, blue. like love that blue gray, carved type scarab. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're the scarabs, and the beads on here are like wooden or something. Oh, and it's uh, brass little links but yeah you can see the so now what uh, what led you to believe that might be from the 20s D where did you read something well i started looking up um scarab vintage scarab jewelry and uh egyptian revival and everything and something that i saw that looked similar was from mm -hmm. the 20s but do you do y'all know that's right. I don't. That sounds like something that'd be fun to research, though. Yeah. Could very. Yeah, I did see a couple of beads that looked like these on some necklaces for sale. If the findings look look real old, now some of those findings on there look pretty shiny. So I don't know, unless they're old. I don't this one know. again, I don't think has a clasp at all. Yeah, there's no clasp on it. That's interesting. Those little long beads that you say are kind or of, feel like wood. I yeah, they feel wooden and hollow, like they've been narrowed out to make what they beads. really. Are. There's probably a name for those. I'm sure there is. Yeah, I probably came yeah, across. I need that to learn all of that. that. <laughs> what the name was. Mm hmm. It reminds me of some of my great uncle's jewelry. He he made handmade jewelry too when my mom was younger because she had some of it and i have it in my jewelry collection but his mm. stuff looked similar to to this rhonda says that it's probably it look she says it looks like a reproduction piece but it still could be good money she said and okay. i'm leaning towards that myself because of the really gold looking findings on it they were shiny mm -hmm. like didn't look like it was good. brass looking beads here. We'll see this one. It's you can see where it's coming off. So if it was like from the twenties, I I would think that everything would look super patina. You know, very much of a patina on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would think anyway. Yeah, you can see where the gold plating or whatever has cut or yeah. come off the yeah. bead. But yeah, I'm not sure of the age either. That's all I found on it. So I wasn't sure if that was right. So um, let me just um, sidetrack the show here. I just love your accent. Like it's so oh good. <laughs> I love it too. <laughs> so have you always lived in Georgia? Uh-huh. I'm born and raised in Georgia. I was from LaGrange originally and I live in Newton now, which is about 30 minutes south of Atlanta. Okay. Off of 85. Do you ever run into uh, the beer men's, uh, like Kim and Brielle? You know what? They are on uh, Bravo. They have their own show. I'm trying to think of the name of it right I now. Did, I've know. never heard of that. Really? Because like she used to be on the Housewives. I think she still is sometimes. 
of um now they filmed the walking dead like out here close to where i live oh in really Sonora. yeah so oh, we go to the little restaurant over there in the little gift shop sometimes so how That's is the thrifting out there like as far as the jewelry i know you mentioned you come across a lot of jewelry jars right yeah um i live in an area of noonan <clears throat> which is right next to peach tree city and mm -hmm. i don't know if y'all have heard anything about georgia but these two areas are wealthier areas, Peachtree City especially. Like it's it's twice as much to live there as it is to live where I live right That's here. My niece used to live. She's a lawyer. Yeah, and so there's like retired Delta uh, people that live in this area that worked for Delta Airlines, and a lot of wealthier people and huge nice. homes. So when we go to estate sales, we go to these houses that are out of control. They're just amazing. <laughs> I bet. And so the jewelry that ends up in the Goodwills around here too are really nice. So yeah, I think that's why I find some of the things that I find. Let me ask you something about the the uh, yard sales for the big house areas. Now, mm -hmm. this is what happens around here for the big houses, and the big houses around here are probably relatively small than the ones in Peachtree City, but. Um, if there's a like an affluent area around here and I go to the like the community yard sale, they're they're gonna want top dollar for their stuff. They're not giving it away. You know, mm -hmm. and I watched Lonnie and and Tanya's video um when they were going to the big house area near um where Tanya lives and they mm -hmm. and they got really, really good bargains. Now, how is it in your area when you go to yard sales in the affluent uh big house areas do do they let their stuff go cheap or is it or do they ask top dollar for it it depends like estate sales you can go to estate sales and sometimes they're like trying to get what we would make off of it but um and i haven't been to enough yard sales in my area since i moved here but uh, the ones I've been to is, from what I can tell, and doing a little business with the online yard sales and stuff, and meeting people, they just get they want to get rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> they don't care. Fortunate. I don't know why people <laughs> here just want to be so stingy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they just want to keep their stuff. You know, it's why even have a yard sale if you're going to charge so much for it? Our Goodwills are stingy. They're getting out of control. Oh, well, yeah. They're charging way too much. I think Goodwills in general are expensive. I think you're better with the mom and pop type little thrift stores. And, and I've found very good luck with the retirement home thrift stores. I mean, they're. That they're I would like to find. I haven't seen any of this here. Well, you know, for vintage jewelry, especially because the older ladies that go in there, they're just, you know, they have no use for their jewelry. They're. Their families are putting it in there and donating it to the thrift store when their when their mothers and grandmothers go in there, you know. So yeah, you're so lucky. Like the little church ran uh, thrift store by my house. One of the main ladies that runs it, like she was the type of person that does those eBay printouts, and she'll like uh, put it beside an item. So yeah, you know, <laughs> I don't really find any big scores in that one unless it's just like right. one time I got some Nintendo stuff there a long time ago. Uh, I don't think she knew about but she knows about the jewelry <laughs> <laughs> that's what i think happens at the estate sales is they go on ebay and they look at the prices of ebay but if you're going to go on ebay and sell it for that price you've had to research it you've had to list it you've had to take yeah. pictures of it you deserve that money mm -hmm. you pulled it out of a closet and stuck it on a table and you won't have that much for it right no. yeah. it <laughs> it i'll come back on sunday when it's 50 percent off <laughs> If it's exactly. still there, though. <laughs> mm. True, true. And I can tell I compete with a lot of people at these estate sales, Virgil. Like, there's yeah. even men over there, like, pushing you out of the way, digging <laughs> through stuff. And he's like, sometimes they're just looking for the little military pins and things like that that mm -hmm. they like to collect or they like to sell, but it's always mixed in with the jewelry and stuff. Oh, yeah. I had a guy with push yes. over. <laughs> Adam wants to know, Angie, what is a retirement thrift store? It's actually a retirement home thrift store, Adam, where it's it's where uh, it's a retirement home where you know the people put their elderly family, you know, and so it's like a retirement home. 
That is so smart. That's a great way to generate money. And then, and, and then a lot of times there'll be a little thrift store attached to the actual facility. And uh, there, are, there are two of them around here that I know of. Um, there's probably, there could be more um, in the outer areas, but there's two here locally that I know of. I'm going to totally do some calling around and see if we have anything like that in our area. Oh, I'm sure you probably need to do the you same think? thing. Let me write it down because I will forget. I know we have some of the Christian based um, thrift stores where, you know, they're doing it, the church members are bringing their items in. There's one in Fayetteville that I can tell that it, it's it's Christian based. And I actually have found a few things there, but they close so early and that's like 45 minutes from me. So sometimes I don't make it over there. That's where my niece lives now, Fayetteville. And I live in Fayetteville. Yeah. Fayetteville, Pennsylvania. <laughs> she lives in Fayetteville, Georgia? Yeah, yeah. my niece lives in Fayetteville, oh, Georgia. Oh, it's a nice town. They have a nice thrift store there. That always reminds there. me. That's where I get the bags of jewelry from. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, so she got a snaggy one from there. Well, so we're I, just having a big old conversation, aren't we? <laughs> so I wanted to ask you about, um, so you're picking up the jewelry jar. So how often do you come across the fine jewelry, like the silver and like the real gold and stuff? Almost every time I get silver and then every now and then I get gold. And that was one of the things I wanted to share was my bet. Like one of my favorite finds at the Goodwill was this. It's, um, 24 karat gold. It's a gold bar. It's oh my on. gosh. Oh wow. wow. And that's the Fortuna on the front. Uh oh. I just. Carol, don't be dropping that. <laughs> I know, right? I wear it all the time when we go to the casino. I'm like, this is my good luck charm. Oh my goodness. I don't know that I have a little bag. It's a little Swiss, Swiss bar, and it says five grams fine gold, 999.9. Nine, nine, nine. Oh, yeah. And then it has the Fortuna on the front. But they had it on a raggedy like bubblegum machine chain. And so I don't think they thought it was real. You know, and a lot of people think that way. Like they think, oh, there's no way people would donate fine jewelry. I put it on a gold chain, but yeah, I love this thing. That's <laughs> yeah, gorgeous. I'd have to keep that one, April. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I did find a lot in my jars the other day, gold wise. And then I find little things like this, and I don't know how old these are. Maybe y'all can help me with that. But they have the gold beads in between, a gold clasp, and then these, I guess, are stone, like onyx, maybe, beads. I was thinking they're so tiny mm -hmm. and delicate, but the clasp doesn't look so, so old, but you got that little bitty diamond plate right there, and that has the 14K. Oh, wow. No yeah, I would say there are definitely some kind of stones of value if it's uh, set in 14 yeah. karat. I would say that they're onyx. I would bet they're onyx. So, like, what era would this be from? It looks 80s. Or, you know, it, it, it's definitely modern, I would say. Oh, here, this might help because this is the other earring was not in there, unfortunately. But this is one of the earrings, and it's like yeah. beaded just like the bracelet, but then it mm -hmm. clasps. That's contemporary. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. really neat. I don't think I've ever seen any uh, earrings like that, quite like that. But this is the first time I've found one like this. And then, here's the other one. And I find them like this sometimes too. And this one's pearls, but it has that same little diamond, 14 karat gold. And then it has some gold beads in between. Mm -hmm. Are those pearls? Yeah, they're like the freshwater little, I guess, Baroque pearls. That's really pretty and dainty. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, they're. I'm thinking like for a little girl, this would be sweet for something, you know, nice for her because it's very small. They're yeah. very, very small. I found some Pandora rings that were you sterling did? silver. I found this one. I put it on my finger. <laughs> That's what I found this one. Is that like a little eternity ring? Yeah, it's and it's got the wavy kind of pattern to it. That's oh, cute. yeah, really pretty. That's very cute. It sparkles really nice, and so I put it with my diamond rings. <laughs> and then this one was a bow, wow. and this one was another like infinity band that 
the little zircon zirconias or whatever are kind of dark in this one, but mm -hmm. like are those all uh, sterling? Band. They're sterling, Pandora. Uh -huh. And the reason I found out they were Pandora, because I don't buy Pandora jewelry, so I didn't know. But in the inside, you have that, um, you have a 925 and then an ALE. And when yeah. I search the ALE, that comes up on the Pandora jewelry. Yeah, I've sold the ALE before with that L on it. It's a dead it's giveaway. Cool. What's that stand for? Yeah, as soon as you put that in, it comes up for Pandora and they're all marked ALE inside. I could see it. So I'm I know. Like, I why wouldn't they just are. put Pandora in there? What is or that? Or a P or something, you know, why don't they have a fancy mark? <laughs> <laughs> right they, here we have a jared's and it has a pandora inside the jared's and i know yeah. i see it when i go into jared's you know because i'll get them to clean my jewelry or size my jewelry and stuff for me but right and here's another little silver ring that i found pretty i've seen this kind of design before but i'm not sure how old that is didn't you call that can't can well i think that kind might be of. yeah kind of filigree or okay yeah can i think is a more um i don't know i, I think i might call that filigree but i'm not sure okay can is more intricate mm -hmm. i hope i'm and then i, I have this one that's cute. a big heavy little are all of these Pandora? No, just those the, the three that were in that one jar I recently got were these three, the bow and the infinity bands. Those were Pandora. This one is just marked 925. I don't know who made it. Oh, Debbie, actually, no, it's not. It's marked Sterling. ALE represents the name of the founder of Pandora, which is Algot Endervoidson. Thank you, Casey. That's, That's yeah. my friend Casey. Thanks, Casey. <laughs> and Debbie said that hard. one that one ring is um the shape of a chevron. And yeah. it was. I don't even know why. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. didn't think that, but she's right. And then let's see, we'll get to the these are the gold necklaces I found. I found this like rope. Oh yeah. wow, that's nice. And it had, and I have a, that cross there that's that came in there too. I put it on there. Let's see if I can get that straight. So both of those, the pendant and the necklace, are real gold. Mm-hmm. They're fourteen oh. carat. Wow. Did you find those pieces in a jewelry jar? Yep. These came out of a jewelry jar I recently opened this week, and those silver rings I was showing you. And then I have this one's tangled up. Oh no. I take a lot of time to untangle stuff and it gets right back tangled again. <laughs> <laughs> it's tangled, but it was a gold chain. And then it had I have the gold elephants on here. There were two gold elephant pins. Oh, that's pretty. pretty. Oh, they're really cute. A little one and a that was the bigger one, and this is the little one. Oh. That yeah. will sell. That will sell good, I would think. That. Yeah, I would think there's people that like the elephant. It's supposed to be good luck or something. Especially if the trunk's up, right? Right. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, I forgot about that. Let's see. No, the tr well, the trunk's up on the little one. The trunk's not up on the big one. <laughs> and this one was in there. This pendant was in there. It's gold. Now, are you going to keep all your gold things, or are you going to... Part I've been yeah. wanting it right now because I didn't know how much to price things at, and you okay, know, I worry sure. about being ripped off a little bit. So. Let me tell you, <laughs> like whenever you go uh, to your jeweler to uh, sell stuff, if that's the route you want to do, or if you want to sell it online, the first thing you're going to want to do is to determine the value of it, right? So you'll do you have like a little jewelry scale? I do have the jewelry scale. So yeah. then, okay, good. So I looked at the I, scrap price on it, but. I think I could do better selling it. What app do you use on your iPhone? I just type in a gold scrap calculator okay, <laughs> into look. Google and the first thing that pops. I use this little, it's a little coin right there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's over there and it's called coinflation. Okay. And so what you do is you enter the carrot 
and then how much uh, it weighs, how many mm -hmm. grams, and it will give you like real time the value. So and okay. anytime I'm going to go sell gold to my jeweler, that's like one of the first things I do because I don't want to be taken either, right? Right. Because unfortunately, yeah. there are shady people out there that will take advantage of us ladies. So um, it's always. And we have those. We buy gold everywhere around <laughs> here. And you know, they're just these little pawn shops. Right. Trying to make a dollar. And I would take your husband with you too. It wouldn't hurt. I mean. Right. Yeah, I know. Sometimes that helps, doesn't it? Yeah, but I would definitely do some research and I, I you know, I, I wouldn't just take it to your jeweler. I would do some research because like we were talking about before the show, a lot of times you can get a lot, lot more for your uh, money when you list it on eBay. Like, for example, mm -hmm. that little Texas nugget uh, charm pendant that I had, um, mm -hmm. if I would have scrapped that, I might have got about $50 for it, but I sold it for $150 on Poshmark. So yeah. I would definitely try online first, at least for a month, see how it goes. If you're not getting any bites, you can always go sell it to your jeweler. And you list like the grams and the weight of the gold together yeah. and all that. You and also it. like in your <clears throat> listing, I would take a picture of the actual gold you're selling on the calculator, you know, so they can see the picture, how much it weighs, like where, it, and it shows the grams and all that stuff. Okay. That's always good to add. This one was in there too. It's a very thin little gold cross. There was another chain. So I put oh, I it, that. That, that chain was in there too. So I found all of that all in one jar. Well, I would have been waiting there when they opened. I was having a ball. I was like, oh, yeah. more. <laughs> There's more. <laughs> That's and this one's cute. It's gold filled and it has a little, looks like, um, what's that song? Oh, I forget the name of the stone oh, right now. A, a C to me. It's a C, and the stone that it's like shaped out of is um. Oh, the stone. That's what I was trying to remember. It's pretty. Pretty it's blue. Iridescent. Uh, what is that stone called? Opal. Opal. That's there you go. That's what I was yeah. thinking. Of. Can y'all see that it's iridescent? Yeah, yeah. a little bit. It's, it's really okay. pretty. So I think that that's what it is, unless it's just some sort of plastic that, but it's on a gold filled chain. Does it feel which cold? Which it could come off of. So I'm thinking that it, it may be. Does the stone feel cold? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's probably opal then. Oh, well, I mean, opal yeah. feel cold, Angie? I didn't know that. Hmm? It's not well, plastic when you buy it, you can tell. Generally, <laughs> gemstones, if they're gemstone, you know, they're cold feeling, except for like amber, and that's that feels like plastic. Yeah. <laughs> the best way to tell with the amber is just looking inside of it, and if you see the little, you know, debris and things like that, because like I have some faux amber, but it's just like swirls of color that they put in there. But the mm -hmm. real amber, you can see little bitty pieces of debris or little bugs or. Yeah, I don't think this one is. Look at this one. What do y'all think? I'm not sure. It's hard to tell from here. Well, yeah, yeah, I would say no. Yeah, from what I can tell, but I'm not certain. You're like. blurry. Am I blurry? Yeah. Can't wait till you get till till thir till Friday. I know. <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> I bet it'll be a big difference. Gosh, I sure oh, hope yeah. so. Our uh, cable line is falling. They actually came out here right before we started and oh, told no. us that the wire was hanging down in our yard. And I looked out there and I was like, "Oh no! Please don't tell me it's not going to work. <laughs> I'm supposed to be online." <laughs> but they it didn't affect anything. It just needs to be like hoisted back up, I guess. Right. They told me that we had a leakage. Like, how does your, how does your cable leak? leak? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, That's weird. I, I guess a, a squirrel chewed it or something like that. Yeah. yeah. That's leak. what happens. The squirrels run across ours and they probably, the weight has like drug it down. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Jars up here. I know they mess it up. So y'all let me know when y'all want me to show something out. Yeah, All right, let's see. Keep it coming. <laughs> Okie dokie.
Um, these I, I found recently. And I was going to ask about the brand, the maker on these, if y'all know how much they're really worth. They're butterflies oh, and they have rhinestones. And it's, uh, I know I looked it up, Pan, Panetta. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a great brand, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, said, I looked it up that said that they um, they tried to make their jewelry like like authentic fine jewelry and it's prong set the rhinestones are prong set and the backs are really nice and smooth i almost thought maybe it could be silver when i first picked them up oh i, I would then I, those. maybe they're rhodium plated or something yeah i, I would say they probably are and mm -hmm. wow there's no stones missing or anything those no, are no i was so excited they're a little some of them are a little champagne, you know, they kind of look brown a little bit, but mm -hmm. to me, I put them on, I was like, they're still pretty. They <laughs> are gorgeous. Wow. Beautiful. So what, what do you, have y'all sold Panetta before? Tanya has, haven't you? Yeah, I have. And I think they sold for about, <clears throat> about, it was like gold with some blue stones. And I think they sold for about $40. But yours, I would go higher than that. I was yeah, going to say, I, was, I saw some Panetta on there going like a hundred and something dollars. And so I was like, how do I know? That's what blows my mind sometimes is like, I can see somebody selling something for 25 and something very similar and made by the same person for a hundred. And I'm like, well, where do I go? Yeah, I always go high, you know, especially if your pictures are good. Are good. A lot of people undersell their items for sure. Thank you. Yeah, and it kind of irritates me. It kind of makes me mad when I, I know because it's like then I can't ask for what yeah. I want to ask. For. Yeah, and it's like, why are you doing that? It's worth so much more than that for one thing, and and it's like, and then like you said, it's like, well, then then you can't put what it. it <laughs> It's really sad because yeah, it's really it's worth exactly more. the same. Because then they're going to go to the cheaper item and buy yeah. that. Yeah, and it's worth more, and it's sad. But I think um, sometimes we have to wait until they sell theirs and then put ours up. I've done that already. But <laughs> I would I would definitely, you know, go high on those and I would because uh as a rule the you probably don't see that many without stones missing and, and mm -hmm. that are that have that subject matter of the you know that's that's a desirable thing. They're figural, they have that little bug thing going on and people love that kind of stuff oh yeah and, uh, yeah i would i would really really be tickled if i found something like that so you have something special there that's the first time i found that maker before yeah and that maker i know that they're rare and then i think when i was looking it up they only did production for a short period of time so i don't think that they actually there's a lot of their jewelry out there and you know what i would put that in your description too i would put you know, sought after Panetta jewelry. And then I would try to put some of the, um, the history of the company in there that, that they were only in business for a short, you know, period of time, make it mm -hmm. look worth their, yeah. you know, make it look worth it. Take some time with it, especially if there's no others, uh, like it listed on any of the selling platforms you list on. And your pictures are very good, so that's a plus too. I've, well, thank I've you, but yours are beautiful. <laughs> I'm trying to achieve what you got going on. No. Yeah, I love the way Angie displays her jewelry. She is thank so creative. So well, like I have, I've always said, it's my little art project, and it's like a it's something that I really take take um, a lot of time with, probably more time than I should. But um, I love it. I love doing it. What else we got? Uh, well, I was wearing it and I forgot about it, but I did find a Tiffany's necklace, a real one. Oh, um, wow. In that silver with all that gold. <gasps> I got excited because I've never owned Tiffany jewelry. Right. <laughs> I was like, this is mine for a while. And I love stars. That's cute. Um, and it's at, you know, the uh, T and Co, 925-1999. So it actually falls within the vintage. If I decide I don't want it, I could sell that one on, on it. How much did you pay for that one jar where you got all this, all these great pieces? Like twenty twenty five dollars. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's an amazing score. 
Yeah, I was like, by the time I was done, I think I had a few hundred dollars worth of profit there off of the bag. I was excited about that one. Somebody, I know that the lady up here at the one near my house, she's a manager and I see her in there a lot. I think she's the one that usually loads the jars, but maybe it had to have been somebody else that day because you could tell it wasn't sorted. It wasn't junk. It was a lot of good stuff that was just tangled up and they just dumped it in there. Yes, that is such a, a great uh, thing for us, too, that a lot of people don't like to take the time to untangle things. Yeah, right. right. Now, I know that for, for fact in Fayetteville that they never go through their jewelry. It's just mm -hmm. always dumped into a bag oh, no. and filled up. <laughs> that just uh, you're so lucky <laughs> isn't she tanya just so yeah. lucky she is very lucky blessed thank you blessed <laughs> i'll say but yeah I, have to, oh, I found this one in a jar before too this one's italian silver and it had matching earrings in there too that have the little discs cute. this has that satin finish on it Mm -hmm. I love this. It gets tangled in your hair, but I love it. It's That's long. Yeah. I love you long necklaces. You have some amazing pieces. It's like you're loaded you up. My you jewelry just... box. That's where I hoard most of them in my jewelry. <laughs> I could have made a lot of money by now, but I'm like, this is mine. This All is right. mine. I won't I won't put it out there unless I'm like, eh, I probably won't wear that very much. Yeah. These I found recently too. These are sterling silver. Wow, they're chunky. They're neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're like layered, different rows of metal wire, mm -hmm. silver wire, but they were marked on that little end down there. You can see it. Amazing. I don't know if you can see the 925, but it says 925 on the end there. On mm -hmm. the post? Yeah, and then they had like little gold backs on them, but I could tell that this that was silver when I picked them up. Mm -hmm. Goodwill. How much do y'all pay when you pay individual for like earrings, necklaces, or brooches from Goodwill? For me, it's anywhere from like you know ninety nine cents to maybe five ninety nine individually priced. Yeah, my brooches and necklaces are a lot higher. They're usually like three to. Four ninety nine. I mm -hmm. think I saw one in Atlanta that was five ninety nine for yeah. necklaces and brooches. The That's earrings awesome. are cheaper. The same the here. Pendants are cheaper. Two ninety seven, and then if it's a necklace, like two ninety seven or something for the earrings, then a necklace is like four or something like mm -hmm. that. As long as it's under five dollars, I usually I'll pick it up, especially if I know it's sterling or yeah, definitely something really nicely rhinestoned. Especially with something that big. That's pretty big. Um, yeah. The weight on that should be nice. Yes. The retirement store, um, home, home stores are cheaper than that, though. Sometimes I can get, you know, nice Monet earrings for a quarter. So that's, yeah. nice. that's why I like those little shops. That's our, our Salvation Army's like that. But I think they're starting to understand what Goodwill is selling theirs for. Because I found my very first jewelry jar there in my last video. And I had never gotten a jewelry jar at our Salvation Army before. They didn't do them. And actually, I would find some of my best jewelry in there because I realized they didn't know what they had. They didn't really care. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they weren't pricing their stuff as expensive as Goodwill. So, but I went back in there and then. <clears throat> the art glass paperweights and stuff. Like oh, this. Yeah, I love the paperweights. Like I just think one of them there. Cute. But they had $9.99, $7.99, $8.99. And when I pick these up at Goodwill and stuff, I only pay like $1.99 for them usually. Yeah, same So here. I'm waiting for the blue tags to go on sale over there, and I'm going to go grab a bunch of them up if they're still mm -hmm. there because my daughter loves them, and I have two of them on my desk. I, I think they're pretty, too. I yeah. Love I love paperweights too. There's a pretty. bunch of them. <laughs> yeah. Karen sells a good many of those in her Etsy shop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Karen's awesome. My daughter won't let me sell them. I mean, if I don't keep uh -huh. it for myself, it has to go up there. And her whole dresser top is a bunch of different blown glass or art glass paperweights and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, as a reseller, it's uh, pretty commonplace for us to want to collect things like 
you know, <laughs> I've got the milk glass going on and some other. I too. I have a just, nice necklace. It's we can't keep everything, though, right? Wow. <laughs> you can try. <laughs> I've been picking I, I, up all these little trinket boxes and little oh. jewelry boxes and started all of that. I've got crystal and wow. uh, china and different ones because I want to list those on my store, you know, for yeah. jewelry. You know. So seeing your little bearers reminded me, I wanted to ask you how you came up with the name, uh, your user ID and your YouTube channel uh, name, Bougie Bear Vintage. Um, I was thinking about that the other day. It was something that me and my fiance were sitting there talking about, you know, and the term, you know, bougie people, when you dress up with a lot of jewelry and stuff, they'll call you bougie. And my friend Casey that commented on here earlier, I know he's made that comment to me before. Oh, you, you looking bougie today. Really? So, <laughs> I love it though. I maybe it's I overdo it with my jewelry sometimes, <laughs> but so that, and um, I, I love teddy bears. I started when I was thrifting. I'd see these really nice teddy bears that I know were collectible type teddy bears. And I would pick them up because I hate them sitting there and they're only a couple of dollars, you know, for the teddy bear. And they're like the, the brands are like the TY or the Boyd's or the, um, the other ones are Vermont teddy bears mm -hmm. that you can get specially ordered and stuff. And so I picked them up and I started putting clothes on them. And then I was like, what if I just put the jewelry on there too and call those bougie bears? <laughs> so do and you sell your bears? They're available. I haven't sold one yet though. I have one upstairs in my room that I use. I, I put it on top of my tall um, jewelry box and I change out the jewelry on it every now and then. And I bought it a fur coat the other day. So she's got a little fur coat. Oh, <laughs> I'll never forget one time at uh, the antique mall where I have a booth, I bought a bear and the bear had like brooches all over it. And I was so excited to buy this bear. I, I saw that cool. video. Yeah. Me too. Me too. So yeah. I still and I was like, bear. that's cool. Yeah. Maybe I should try and sell it and put some uh, brooches that I don't want anymore on there. So it's, right. a, it's a really unique way to, to display and to sell your items, I feel. Mm hmm. I would like to see people like here's one I did recently <laughs> that would want them and could do the same thing I do is just put your jewelry on there. It's so I give them themes. Like he's a little beachy guy. I found these little baby <laughs> sunglasses. I haven't taken the little Y off of them yet. They're Cute. But these are little baby sunglasses, so I made him like a little Hawaiian beach bear or something. That's so cute. He's got a little carrot brooch and a puka <laughs> type shell <laughs> necklace. He's a little surfer. And then I found this straw hat and I was like, oh, let me put that on him. So. <laughs> um, April, Lonnie wants me to tell you that that jewelry case is actually a winder for automatic watches. He says it's pretty valuable. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, so maybe you a might want to maybe sell it. Ooh, a winder. What? What? A winder a for automatic watches. Hmm. Automatic watches. What's an automatic watch? I thought it was just a display um, piece because they rotate, you know, like they do in the jewelry stores. Is that like, I'll have to look am that I'm up. Am missing something on the automatic watch? Or am I just not processing something right? As yeah. usual. Like what's an automatic watch, Lonnie? Are those the ones that just tick without a battery? That sounded really blonde, didn't it? <laughs> no, I'm right with you. I mean, I want to know what an automatic watch is. <laughs> I know uh, there's wind up watches. And okay, then he says automatic watches are wound by being in motion. So the <gasps> case keeps them moving and ready to wear. Oh, okay. That's really unique. Oh. Thanks, wow. So funny. Oh, I think I think he has one. It and it something about the motion. Yeah, I think I think Tyrone has one of those type of watches. I've never heard of that. See, it would have been perfect if he would have put his watches in there. That's what I originally picked it up for. <laughs> right. Well, they must be so relatively three hundred or more because I 
Wow. I think I may have heard of them at one time, but then I forgot they existed. Like usual, like usual. <laughs> if it's not shiny and pretty, I don't pay anything. I know. <laughs> Do you have any more pieces you want to share? Yeah, sure. I had these in my hand a minute ago. Uh, the shoe clips, I guess. That's what these are. Yeah, they oh, yeah. are. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I found these. And what do y'all sell those for? Uh, depends. I can, I've can. i sold them for, uh, I don't think I've sold any for 20, but right around there, maybe 18, 17. Um, I haven't sold any for a while. I know that uh, there's a brand, MUSI, that they sell mm -hmm. They sell pretty good. These I don't think are I have any listed. S dot A R T E Sarte maybe or S R T. They're nice. On the back. I like the bows. Um, yeah, they have that nautical rope type mm -hmm. or tassel like mm -hmm. on curtains or something maybe. Yeah, they're cute. Um, I, I think those would go nice with it. Don't know if I have any list. I think I do have some listed right now. Yeah, I do. But I, I have found some hideous now. 80 ones though, the other day. <laughs> I didn't like those. It They're like those like fake plasticky rhinestones. Yeah, it seems like the vintage ones sell better than the new one, newer ones. And probably, the, I would imagine, the blingy ones too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The ones that are more um, unusual. I'm trying to look some up on eBay. Um. <laughs> Bougie bows, yep. <laughs> Bougie bows. I know. I'm just so excited that I learned a new word today. <laughs> <laughs> and then that song "Bad and Bougie," that rap song, came out, you know, too. So that was yeah. pretty popular. I don't know about that one. I have to look at it. Yeah, look at the I video like for "Bad and Bougie." Bad and bougie. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a trendy word, I guess, too. Probably with younger generations so maybe they will catch attention See what it is. oh yeah oh. you were talking about this brand before but let me see if i can remember let me get my loop i can't remember what show but y'all brought that up and i couldn't pronounce it i think my jewelry's coming okay uh -oh. it sounds like burberry but it's burby burberry oh, oh yeah. edgar edgar Bur. Barabi, 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 or something B. like that. That's what this one is. <laughs> oh, isn't that cute? Oh, it is adorable. And this comes off. It. He can change. You can change his outfit. That is so stupid. But I don't have the second it. outfit because I looked it up and I found it, but it has another outfit that goes. I would imagine that would be pretty valuable. It's really oh, yeah. I bet. And yeah, okay. it has his little cart or tag on the back. Mm -hmm. There's one. That's one piece. And I have some, I found some JaVinci pierced. Earrings. Very nice. You're sitting on a gold mine over there, April. I know I have too much, and I need to get it all listed so I can make that money. <laughs> right. I just like playing with it. I just, I don't get rid of it. This one I haven't tested for Bakelite. I don't know if it is. But it's interesting. Oh, yeah. It's got that very pearlescent look. And then but it has these rhinestones embedded. And then the gold is painted on. Maybe lucite. It has, yeah. Yeah, maybe that too. And it has a little Y back. But mm -hmm. that's cute. I don't know what I could get for him. I didn't find anything that looks like him on there. Yeah, I'm not finding any bearers on eBay. I'll have to go look at uh, Worth Point. Angie, you said something about the maker that makes these type. Uh, Pierre Bex. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's a, a real Pierre Bex, but it's of his style. It's hard to tell, but when you look them up and people that have them listed as Pierre Bex, I have two of them. One of them's like triangular shaped. Oh, yeah. They look like this, but I don't know because there's no markings. And this oh, one has yeah. like that kind of back on it, but my other one has a nicer. Pin yeah, that looks vintage for sure. I would say that the uh, triangular one would be maybe more um, 
likely to be a real one than if it's fancier on the back. I'm not sure. Like mine mm -hmm. weren't either, but I just put in my description or in my title of the, you know, Pierre Beck style or, you know, something mm -hmm. like that. You don't have to, you know, you can just say that it's the style of Pierre Beck's okay. without it's his, you know. And then I, I found a, a nice lot of stuff from the Salvation Army that was in the like tarnish, those tarnish bags and stuff. They're plastic oh. bags that's supposed to keep silver from tarnishing. This one's pearls and mother of pearl shell. Oh, wow, that's really silver. Cool. But then you look it up, the marking on there says L U C. Hmm. Nine two five. And when I looked that up, it was somebody that sold on like QVC or oh, or one of the jewelry TV shows. And so these actually go for good money. So the L U C, if you see that marked on the silver jewelry, this should go for for good money. Yeah, that looked really pretty with a black background too. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's pretty. I like it. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Nice. You find such great stuff. Yes, you do. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so that was that one. And then there was the, um, have y'all heard of that uh, other one? It's called Something Trading Company. Or tr it's, where did I put that? I'll have to look that name up again. Yeah, that reminds me of something Steve and Steph would say. What is it, via trading company or something? Hmm. <laughs> DRT. It's DRT. Desert Rose Trading. Mm. Y'all heard of that jewelry maker? Mm. I think mm. the per, the money goes to a charity or something, but you can find the website online. But they use natural stones that they mine from different countries. Oh, wow. Stuff like that, like Africa or somewhere like that. And the proceeds, I think, are supposed to help the people in that region that the stone comes from. Mm -hmm. I found some of their jewelry and it's if you look on their website how much their stones like I found some a turquoise necklace. Um this one over here has a big silver I guess I can show you oh, a massive thing of necklaces right here. <laughs> I know it's, it's absurd really. I'm just glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> Let's see, here it is. You can get it out without. How much do you sell your vintage Brighton necklaces and stuff for, Tanya? Brighton for me has been selling really good lately. Um, I sold one on, I think I sold, I think it was a bracelet I sold on Poshmark. And I've sold some pieces on eBay too recently. <coughs> I don't know. A lot of times I'll be right back. you can still look it up on, uh, oh gosh, Angie, Angie's gone to get the box of jewelry, y'all. <laughs> right. Bring it back, Angie. Come on. I want to see it. <laughs> we know exactly what she's going to be doing this afternoon. <laughs> Probably what I do, just sit there and play with your jewelry, look at it, try it on. I do. That. Right. Then I'll, then I'll go and look something up and then come back to the box. This one's heavily tarnished. I haven't cleaned it yet, but this is the Desert Rose Trading. Oh, See, there's different really stones set in there, and then each bead is a different stone so on here too. This would look good with like that uh, that Pendleton, like Native American kind of design. Oh yeah, I mean, I think it would look nice. But oh, it has nice. you'll find if you find it, it has the DTR. Okay, because I've never heard of that one. Can you see the mark? A little bit, yes. <laughs> it's like a big D, a small T, and a little R, and then it has the 925 on there. But yeah, that's Desert Rose Trading, and they go for good money. Okay. Is it I Christmas morning, her. Angie? Huh? Is yeah, it Christmas morning? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> is it two um, boxes? Well, one of them is from somebody else, actually. But oh, okay. This, this one's Kim's. Is, yeah. it heavy? is that a large flat rate? Pretty heavy. I guess it is a large flat rate. Yeah, yeah. I see it says. Okay. 
heavy. All right. Well, I guess Gosh. we better wrap this up. <laughs> so Andy, keep you're busy. <laughs> I'm wearing some of my jewelry. Let me tell you what I got on. Yes. This is, let me get myself on so I can see where, what I'm doing. I can't, I can't think. I can't breathe. <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Usually I'm not real big on this kind of caged stone jewelry, but I thought this one was pretty because it's black probably. Yeah. Black and it's it's finished off real nice. It's and then really I, I put it on this rope chain, which I think it looks real good. Then it looks really good with that black shirt. Yeah. Very yeah, nice. I love black and gold together. Yeah, yeah me too. And I got these little clip earrings on. I thought they looked pretty good with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I better take them off because I can't wear anything but gold, and I probably get probably get itchy ears now. And then I got this on. I, I just love this little bracelet. I just love it, and no, and it has been in my shop forever. No one buys it. It's got the little dingle on it. And the little seed beads. <laughs> there, it's actually no, it's not seed beads. It's it's. I don't even know what it is. It's it's almost like straw, but it's not. It's more, um, it's more sturdy than straw. I don't even know. It's very vintage, so I'm not even sure the the material of it. But yeah, I just think it's so cute. It is cute, and nobody buys it. So I should just keep this. <laughs> what I should do. I feel like that. I'm yeah. like, it's so cute. Why don't they buy it? <laughs> yeah, I'll, just, I'll just wear it. Probably, I'll just keep it. Oh gosh, I do not keep it. Yeah, there I go again. <laughs> Rags is saying it's a dingleberry, Andy. I didn't say, I just said dingle. I didn't, I left the berry part off, but somebody finished it for me. <laughs> Rags finished it for me. Um, right. Well, this has been so much fun. April, we'd love to have you back on again. Definitely. Yes. Oh, anytime. Anytime. I would love to. Thank you for I would ask you one thing though before we go. This brooch here, I found and I love it. It's beautiful. But it had a stone inset right here. Is there any way I could like enamel that or something for my own personal use, I guess, to fix it to where it's not just gold there? You could try a little it. rhinestone missing. It, it was a stone and it's got that unique shape of its head. So all this was a stone set right in here, oh, like all the way down. And it's missing. I'm assuming it would look like this one, maybe. Oh, yeah. That's really I, pretty. I might try to find some kind of stone to put in there before I would enamel it. Or or you could enamel it, and then if you didn't like it, then try to find some kind of stone to put in. I don't, yeah, I'm sure you could find, like, a little stone. stone to fit in there. That's a – see the shape of it? Mm-hmm. I don't know how I would get the shape. It's shaped just like its head. Like a teardrop, oh. maybe a teardrop shaped rhinestone would fit in there. Maybe, yeah. Vicky wants to know how long uh, do I keep a non-selling piece in my shop before I take it down? Uh, a long time. <laughs> Let's see, I've had my shop seven, going on eight years now, I think. I've probably, I probably have some stuff in there <laughs> that's, a, that's pretty old, <laughs> that's years old, so. I don't know how long I've had this in there, years and years, but yeah, right. long time. Okay, um, so I want to thank everybody for joining us in the chat. It's always a lot of fun when you guys are here with us and everyone's yeah. talking and you guys are giving, giving us information. So that's great. And um, please subscribe to Angie here on YouTube, Treasured Vintage, and also to April. Uh, bougie bear vintage and the links for their channels are in the description box down below and hopefully we'll be having april on april on again really soon and we will see you guys are we going to do a show next week angie or is it the week after that it's up to you tanya if you can get somebody for next week i'm i'm good for next week okay so that reminds me so uh be sure to uh join our jewelry group it's called thrifty jewelry treasures on facebook and there you can find out uh when we will be doing uh, another show and who our guest will be. So I hope everybody has a great rest of the day. And I'm sure you guys probably want to go check out Angie's channel today. I'm sure she'll be doing some kind of a video. <laughs> I don't know if it'll be today, but it'll be coming up. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.